back everybody to the Tavern Tales. Nims is taking a break, but I'm joined here with life coach and the one and only ek 8 p How are you doing, guys? <laughs> yeah, good stuff, yeah. Good stuff, yeah. Yeah, I'm still not low at 100%, but I'm um, willing to bring the excitement that's necessary to be here at this casting couch, right? Yeah, it's a privilege. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have uh, Stansivka versus Lothar coming up here. And uh, Stansivka has really been impressing me, at least in this tournament. Uh, Lothar as well, but I mean, Stansivka has been playing a bit better, in my opinion. Uh, what do you guys think about Stansivka so far? Yeah, I think the same. I mean, uh, Stan is obviously like at the top of his game at the moment, like uh, his performance at this tournament also showed. And I mean, he is uh, very experienced with um, card games anyways. Like he was also a quite famous MTG, uh, like Magic the mm -hmm. Gathering player. And so um, he just like um, transfers, uh, transferred his knowledge and his skills to Hearthstone. And apparently he's doing really well at that. So Yeah, Stan Sivka was actually really... Um no, uh, not that, not as confident at the start of his Hearthstone career. Uh, he thought he like was, uh, can't can't compete with the top of the class, right? But mm -hmm. um, he actually proves right now, right here, that he is here to play, that he is here to hang with the best. And um, what I also like uh, to mention is um, that we've seen we've been seeing like ever since the quarterfinals, right? There is this trend of the qualified players from the open brackets um, just dominating everyone mm -hmm. and. Um, like no one is uh, pretty much expecting that, and I I think that uh, no one would have expe ever expected like the quarter, uh, the semifinals of um, Stanislav Sivka versus Lothar here. Absolutely, at least no. I didn't. No, no, uh, I didn't even know who he was before here. I heard the name in the China versus EU uh, mm -hmm. tournament, but that's about it. That's all I've heard about him. Uh, but Lothar has been impressing as well. I mean, he came from the open bracket as you said, and he. He's been playing uh, quite, quite well, I must say. He beat Fr Warrior with Freeze Mage, just mm -hmm. uh, his other, the other series. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, it requires a bit of luck as well, though, but still. Yeah, you can't, you can't judge it all on luck, though, because he came through the, um, through the tough open bracket. Mm -hmm. And um, like it's surprising to see that actually Lothar is, not right now, even though he's the only guy from Nihilum to, who wasn't invited, that he's right now the best performing Nihilum player in this tournament. <laughs> no offense, life coach. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I agree. Um, uh, we have seen Stan Sivka um, changing his druid every time you're allowed to change deck. He's, he kept druid, but he kept switching out like uh, different tech cards. Mm -hmm. First, he played double zombie shadow mind control tech to counter aggro. And then he played the, Farsi, uh, the combo list, uh, normal standard druid. And then he played the Farseer and double uh, Iron Big Owl. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about this kind of strategy? Like always switching out cards, like four or five cards in the deck to like mind game your opponent, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a good choice. I mean, especially because your opponent uh, still perceives that the deck is exactly the same build you had before because you didn't switch it, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, or you didn't switch the class or you didn't switch like RAM completely to combo or whatever. So they expect exact cards. So you can really have the surprising effects with uh, single cards, for example, mind control tech. I mean, it's so huge if your opponent doesn't know you play it and he doesn't play around and then suddenly it can hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those kind of blowout cards like Mind Control Tech, so like Black uh, Knight, like Big Game Hunter, additional Big Game Hunters maybe, and stuff like that. It's just um, what um, just completely can blow out your opponent and uh, swing the game so much in your favor that it's so easy to take the victory from there. And of course, your opponent, because he expected something else, mm -hmm. will play right into that. So we see that Sasivka actually ditched his druid uh, this time around. Um, that's interesting. Do we? Do you guys think that um, he's playing the classic control warrior or is he playing the everyone get in here? I of course always am hoping for the uh, for the good old dank meme warrior. <laughs> Me too buddy. Me too. And uh, yeah, I, I really want to see this deck in action more but uh, control warrior has been very popular as well and this has been mm -hmm. performing very well for most players here. Mm -hmm. Right now we see Paladin versus Sue and uh, some people might say that the Sue is favored and some people might say that the Paladin is favored. What do you think, Life Coach? You've been playing a lot of uh, Paladin. Yeah, I think the Paladin should be favored, like mm. depending on the build, but usually the Paladin should be sli not huge, but should be slightly favored because they have so much early game. Also, all the cards of Paladin are... I mean, I don't say they should be strong. Uh, they are stronger than they should be. But for example, Master of for Battle is like simply the very strongest mm -hmm. three drop uh, by far in the whole game, and. 
this combined with some nice early games cards like sometimes Shomicho, but even like the class mini card, bots. like the shielded mini bots, mm -hmm. simply give like the tempo advantage you need. And so, of course, this is also not like um, this. Is, uh, of, of course, also come knowledge needs board control to actually um, uh, increase their power, increase their playing strength. So if you can actually take away the board control with Paladin, you usually win. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that the the it depends on the build of the like you said it depends on the build. Which one is better against Paladin? The the one like Colento version with like Void Caller and Malganis or like the Sixo with like uh, Sea Giants and uh, imp like imp implosion synergies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was also thinking about like the Paladin build, like whether you play one show or two shows, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, a big, big, uh, yeah, like the, this has a big impact, or whether you play Jones or not. But um, yeah, like given the other version, of course, CJ doesn't help that much against Paladin, but I don't think it's like such a huge mm -hmm. difference. Yeah, so he's thinking about coining out the knife juggler. It's quick. gonna be pretty awkward unless he top takes another two drop, right? So. Yeah. It's probably not mm. the play here. What do you think, Echo? Yeah, you can save the coin for a potential later um, kind of two-card combo um, that you might uh, draw into. Of course, um, coining out the knife juggler um, is only good, actually, if you have a decent follow-up, I would say. For example, a shield of Medibot. This is why <laughs> I would also not do this right now. Yeah. Did, did you see, by the way, that many people are practicing groping now? Yeah. yeah, they learn from yeah. the best, you know. You're their idol. I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like a lot of people are trying to mind game as well. Like they're they're thinking about uh, like druids. Like even though they don't have the innovate, they're like thinking very long for like uh, for a potential innovate play, you know. Okay. And trying mm -hmm. to mind game their opponent, but at some point it just becomes silly. I thought I don't remember who it was, but there was two players. I think it was uh, uh, RDU and uh, whoever he played. They kept mind gaming, and they both knew that like. They were like just making stuff up, you know, to, to troll their opponent. And okay. It was quite funny. So there we see a zombie chow. He really wanted that one turn earlier, and he actually oh, oh, oh. he ropes. Uh, he has to end play. Turn. He has to play. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> because he didn't press the end turn button. Yeah. That's why he only got 15 seconds for his turn. Although actually, like once you make your first play uh, during that turn, you get uh, you remove the rope. Yeah. So all he needed to do was play one card. Ooh, are you sure you don't want to trade he, first? He could have also played what knife juggler and uh, chow, but you, yeah, you don't like that. It, it's quite nice to follow up uh, with the master later. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, I think he didn't have enough time to think about it because the rope was going uh, all so right. fast. All right, okay. So I think he missed that. Yeah, but keeping the master for battle, for, uh, keeping the knife juggler for the master for battle, especially if you still have the coin in your hand, it is gonna be uh, very big for. Yeah, the but uh, do you think he can afford to wait that long? I mean, what is gonna do in turn three if you want to play a turn for uh, knife juggler coin master? Yeah, the zoo is gonna get ahead on board in a big way, but um, this is like one of the best comeback mechanisms for Paladin if you don't have the consecration. So mm -hmm. um, this is what. Um, Stan Zipka is actually banking on, but uh, the Imp Gang boss right here like puts a huge uh, just 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 removes this game plan basically because the juggles uh, potentially hitting the Imp Gang boss are so detrimental. But I mean, he could have cleared, right? I mean, the board would have simply be empty now. No. So like oh, the yeah, two yeah, minions yeah. would have cleared the mm. two minions, and then the master comes down. So it's like I'm not sure. But yeah. I mean, because now I don't see anything he could do. <laughs> it's like. You save the abusive sergeant here? Yeah. For the egg. Yeah. Yeah, and now Stan Zipka really needs some good juggles. True silver? Well, I could play the true silver, but it doesn't really mo remove much damage. He can only attack the void walker. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you don't want to hit the in gang boss here, that's no. for sure. Yeah, he needs the juggles on the juggler, preferably. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it oh. does go. That's aw awful. <laughs> Oh. And especially <laughs> since the enemy juggler also procs. Wow. wow. Oh, one hit on it. Oh. That was an almost worst case scenario. Like, it could have hit the egg, I guess, as well as. Yeah, it could have been way worse, but it could have uh, yeah. also been way better. Like, Stanis of uh, Kirka basically needed a miracle there with the juggles. Uh, didn't get it, and now the Zulu player will just get so far ahead. And we'll that really position here. is a really good top deck here. Uh, curves out perfectly and you have that Malganis in your hand yeah. uh, in case of Voidcaller dying. There's so many demons waiting to just get buffed by the Malganis. It's going to be amazing once you hit the board. 
Yeah, so, yeah, that might be something he wants to think about here. Uh, like, making room for more demons, uh, sacrificing his own knife juggler just to get the, he can get the buff from uh, Morganis. Yeah, of course. Sir, first, he will still need a minion uh, to run the Void Caller into, so the Void Caller dies, which it doesn't. Uh, this is uh, which is not that important. <laughs> this is so much pressure. All of those knife jugglers. But also, if you take a look at the classes, I mean, it doesn't matter too much, right? Because the the zoo would have had a good matchup against Control Warrior, mm -hmm. if it's Control Warrior. But I, I guess. Like and because he knows Lotha is only playing face hunter, he is more uh, like he has more reasons to actually bring control warrior. So Zoo is favored against mm -hmm. control warrior, and it's actually um, yeah, it's it's okay against but the other. But the green pattern is actually quite good against hunter as well. You have oh, unstable okay. ghouls, you have two whirlwinds, you have a lot of uh, removal for uh, all the aggressive hunter cards, and the frozen berserker does a lot uh, in that match. You can actually raise the hunter. You, need, you don't need to play defensive. Okay, fair enough. So okay. it's actually quite good. But also the paladin has like a good way to score against druid and against shaman. I don't even know how good it is. But so wh what do you think here about playing uh, abusive on the sludge belcher here and then trading in so it dies? Oh yeah, and that then, is then and then playing and then if you get Morganis, you can play the doom garden without losing any cards. That's super interesting. It is actually <laughs> a really a really good play. And you can yeah. actually kill him then, right? That's super interesting, and I like it. Yeah, that's super strong. Yeah, actually, that's Because this is exactly what uh, Lothar needs to like activate the Void Call, it's what he wants, basically. But it, does he see this play? I, I, it, it's not a very easy play to yeah, spot. Yeah, I wanted to say, yeah, it's, it's super genius. Like, we have thousand genius here. No joke. Like, it's, it's really like... Yeah, well, he's going to go ahead and uh, trade that anyway. Uh, I mean, the game is pretty much in his hand anyway. Uh, I don't know what kind of card could have brought the, the Paladin back into this. No, no really. Yeah. Not really. Oh. Yeah. yeah, there's there the lethal. <laughs> <Okay>. That's <laughs> happy. <laughs> Stone Cold face. 